that doesn't do anything. Why does this guy's eight pack not look natural? Well, because it's not. Oh my God! Because a guy of his size should not have an eight pack. Now this is called abdominal etching or high definition liposculpture, where you liposuction along the tendinous inscriptions of the rectus muscles, and by liposuctioning that, you can make it look like the fat is actually muscle. Now it only looks natural if it's done very subtly and if it's done on somebody who's already quite lean. This gentleman, unfortunately, is not very lean and so it does not make sense to do this type of an operation on him because obviously it doesn't look real. Now this is also the operation that people are accusing Drake of having done. And really the main telltale sign of this operation is when somebody has a very defined six pack or an eight pack and the rest of their body though isn't all that defined at all. How long has it been like that? Half hour now. Yeah. Not married yet, are you? Oh, you're right there. She's gonna start an IV and we're gonna give you some little bit of muscle relax and stuff. Uh -huh. And then we're gonna try and put it back. This is called an open lock, where a person who maybe has some dysfunction of their temporomandibular joint or their TMJ, it can actually be locked open. And this can occur by many different reasons. One of them is actually where the condyle, the portion of the bone itself, has gone out of place. Now this occurs more often when people are having TMJ problems, if they're noticing a lot of clicking when they open and close their mouth. And one way to prevent this, honestly, is just not to yawn really, really big. Now typically the treatment for something like this can be very simple. You can have the person try to move their jaw from side to side and sometimes that will kind of unlock that open lock position. Other times you have to try to relax those muscles and set the jaw back into place. This is called cupping, and this is a very ancient practice that is used to help reduce a person's recovery time after, let's say, an injury or some type of a sporting event. Now, I've not seen any science to show that this actually works, but there are a lot of professional athletes who have cupping done. I think the Olympic champion Michael Phelps may be one of the best examples of this. This is the skin of a very older woman, and as you can see, this is the skin of a woman whose life is well lived. Now, studies show that in the first five years after menopause, women lose 30% of the thickness of their collagen in the skin. After that, they lose about 2% of the thickness every year, and this is one big reason why you may see some women who are in their 70s and 80s and 90s, and their skin can be absolutely tissue paper thin, so thin that sometimes even just a scratch can cause it to tear. So what can you do to help prevent this from happening? Well, the first thing you can do is that depending on when you start, you could consider hormone replacement therapy. There are some studies that do appear to show that by taking estrogen fairly soon after perimenopausal symptoms or menopause occurs, uh, that can help to reduce the loss of collagen that occurs with aging. You can also increase the amount of healthy protein that you eat. Collagen is a protein, so by ingesting good amounts of healthy protein, you can help then provide building blocks for the body to create that collagen for your skin. And the third thing you can do is to take a hydrolyzed collagen supplement. Collagen supplements do work to help thicken the collagen of the skin. And that is one reason why our Yoon Beauty Supplemental Collagen is by far our top selling product at yoonbeauty.com because collagen works and it can help virtually all adults. I've got a link for our Yoon Beauty Supplemental Collagen in the caption below and attach this video. If you use the coupon code 20OFF, you can get $20 off your first order over $99.
So this doctor is advertising that you need to have a forehead that is either two or three fingers wide. Is that actually necessary? Well, the average forehead height is six centimeters, a little bit more for men, a little bit less for women. That is about three finger lengths in general. And as you can see, unfortunately, I'm at four. A large forehead is considered to be any forehead that's over about 6.3 centimeters. And that's about what I have. So if you've got a five head or more, should you have a forehead reduction surgery? Well, I'll tell you another name for forehead reduction is an anterior hairline forehead lift. And this does create a permanent scar right in front of the hairline, as you can see in that video. I have never seen a scar in that location that has been invisible. And if you have a tendency for your hair to recede a bit, then that scar may literally become visible if the hairline recedes farther. So if you truly don't like where your hairline is, the first thing that I would consider would be actual hair transplants to recreate that forehead. Because even if you get some type of, let's say, recession of the hair, it's not going to be nearly as concerning as if the hair recedes and now you got a big scar that everybody can see. This reminds me of a time when I was in college and I went skiing in Switzerland. And literally I was, I think, 19 years old at the time. I had never actually been sunburned in my life because for some reason as a young person, I always had enough pigment that I never got burned, even though I rarely wore sunscreen. So I was out in Switzerland for the first time with a bunch of college kids going skiing in Zermatt. And my buddy gave me a little bit of sunscreen. I put it on my hands and went like this to my cheeks and didn't think anything of it. And then I went skiing for the day. And at the end of the day, my face was on fire. I had the worst sunburn ever, except two handprints on the middle of my cheeks. And because I have darker skin, my skin got real dark from the inflammation from that sunburn. And it was like I had these two handprints for months afterwards and everybody made fun of me. This guy deserved it kind of too. Did that video get you just a little bit nervous? Well, thalassophobia is a fear of deep bodies of water. And videos like that, if they do get you a little bit nervous, maybe you have thalassophobia. Now, I would argue that almost everybody has some thalassophobia. And all you have to do is go on a cruise and late at night when it's pitch black outside, look out at the sea around you and you can get definite thalassophobia. It's really scary when you look out there and it's just ocean or sea as far as you can see and it's just pitch black and you don't know what dangers lurk under that water. It is actually kind of frightening. Urine is the number one anti-aging resource as far as I'm concerned by far. Urea is the only clinically proven skin moisturizer in the world. Urea is urine. So your skin looks amazing. So are you oh, rubbing thanks, the urine on your face? Every day. It absorbs right away. Any objection would be, is your face going to smell? You can smell my face. <laughs> um, I only put it on an hour ago. You'd yeah. smell it if it's there. You can wash it off after 10 minutes, but you don't need to because it's already absorbed. So this guy is completely wrong. Urea and urine are not the same thing. The urea that you see in skincare is a great moisturizer of the skin, but it is made in a lab as actual urea. Urine contains urea, but it has a lot of other things in it as well. Urine is also not always sterile, and you can get infections from it, so this is not the same thing. Please do not put urine on your face and think that this is the same thing as urea, because no matter what Jonathan Otto says, it just isn't, my friends. Now, I think the only thing worse than putting urine on your face is to like drink it or something like that. Oh, there you go. All right. Wow. Now this In a nice wine cup. I'm actually psyching myself up right now. I don't think I've actually really done someone else's. I'm wow. like pumped. Here we go. <laughs> Yo. Wine. <laughs> Good job, Lana. That is incredible. That was not incredible. That was disgusting. Do not drink somebody else's urine. There are definite diseases that you can get from it, like sexually transmitted type diseases. So stay away from other people's urine and please don't bother putting it on your face or drinking your own urine either. It is just not good for you. There's so many great drinks out there. Like why would you drink urine? Because it's sterile and I like the taste. Okay.
playing around with my stomach. And look, I didn't have two kids, right? I feel like if I wanted to get a tummy tuck, I would want them to pull the skin sideways. Do you see how it's like smooth if you pull it sideways? Because when they do it, they be like doing it up and down and then you can still see all those little white lines. Well, it's a good thought. So it is true that when we do a tummy tuck, we pull the skin downward. And one big reason why is to hide the scar from that operation nice and low so that you can hide it, let's say, under your underwear or a bathing suit or a pair of shorts. The other reason why we do it that way is oftentimes the skin that is most stretched out, that has the most stretch marks, is the skin that's below the belly button, around the belly button or below it. And then we can remove most of those stretch marks with the operation. Now, there is a such a thing as a reverse tummy tuck, where we actually pull the skin upward and we create a scar in the crease underneath the breast going all the way across the sternum or the chest. It is very rarely done. I have honestly never done it in my 20 years of practice. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because now you're taking the skin in general that has gotten real stretched out, which is a lower tummy skin, and you're pulling that up and you're cutting out the skin from the upper abdomen that usually is smoother and hasn't been as stretched out. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, she's saying, hey, why not pull it out from the sides? Well, pulling it out from the sides means now you're gonna have to have a scar going all the way up and down the sides of your basically waist and hips. And that doesn't make a lot of sense either. So I would go with the traditional tummy tuck. I'm not a fan of the reverse tummy tuck and her kind of side tuck thing, unfortunately, just won't work. Shalom, khidmat dostoye kolam, aziz edelam. این پیج اصلی منه آناهیتا ناچو خوشحال میشم فالو کنید دوستتون دارم So the question is not what has she done but what hasn't she had done and what's going on with that forehead and the eyebrows All right after that video I think I need to have something that just kind of clears the palate a little bit Let's take a peek at one of my TikTok videos and see what you think. My dad and my grandpa both have permafrowns and I'm afraid I'm gonna get it too. Look at this. So this is how I'm gonna turn my permafrown upside down. I have very active depressor anguli oris muscles and these pull the corners of the mouth down. So my nurse is injecting Botox into them to paralyze them. A few units on each side weakens that muscle for three to four months. Now this is me right before the injection. Those injections were a week ago. Now watch me try to make that face. It works! So this video was made uh, several weeks ago and it's still working. The interesting thing is when you inject Botox into the DAO, the depressor anguli oris muscles in the lower face, unlike let's say if you do the forehead or what we call the glabella or the frown lines, where these areas may feel just a little bit stiff because they're not moving, I don't really feel it down here. It's just that I cannot make a frown, but it doesn't feel restrictive in any way. I just can't do it, so watch this. So I'm kind of getting a little of it back because it's been now since I had the actual injection, maybe a month or so, maybe three to four weeks, something like that. Um, but still, I don't feel at all like it is stiff or immobile, I just can't do it. And it feels actually very natural. So I really actually like these injections down here. So these are some pretty out there TikToks, but if you'd like to watch me react to some TikToks that are absolutely unhinged, you gotta take a peek at this video right up here. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.